Several versions of the Zafranama exist, however out of the versions written in the 15th century, only three illustrated copies survive, the Zafranama of Ibrahim Sultan, the Zafranama of Sultan Hussein, and the Turk ve Islam Eserleri Mflzesi Zafranama. This article examines more closely the Zafranama written for Sultan Hussein, also known as the Garrett Zafranama. The variety of versions of the Zafranama can be attributed to the wide variety of patrons who commissioned the production of this manuscript. Each patron had different personal tastes and goals for their version of the Zafranama, which influenced the choices of illustrations and design executed by the artists of their choosing. See function of the paintings. Topic. Background The Zafranama, which translates to Book of Victories, is a panegyric book written by Sharif al-Din Ali Yazdi approximately two decades after the death of its main subject, Timur, the Turco-Mongol Persianate conqueror. It was commissioned by Ibrahim Sultan, Timur's grandson between 1424-28, and remains one of the best-known sources of Timur's life. The text was written using the notes taken by royal scribes and secretaries of Timur, suggesting that the history of the book was based on a careful and desired selection of facts. Most of the poetry and texts in the beginning of Islamic Iran were panegyric, written at the demand of political and religious leaders as part of their attempt to establish their own legacy. In his lifetime, Timur wished that his deeds would be commemorated through clear and simple language. However, the Zafranama has a decent amount of hyperbolic language and panegyric sentiment, revealing that the current literary tastes of the next generation of writers prevailed over Timur's wishes. The Zafranama was often copied and illustrated in Persia before making its way to being translated into Chagatay Turkish under the Uzbeks, and into Ottoman Turkish during the 16th century. More recently, the Zafranama was translated into French in 1722 by François Petit de la Croix and into English the following year. The Zafranama of Yazdi is one of several 15th-century texts that highlights Timur's leadership and military accomplishments. Sharif al-Din Ali Yazdi relied on these previous texts about Timur's career as a conqueror to influence his text of the Zafranama. One of his main influences was a biography written by Nizam al-Din Shami in 1404. An example of proof of this statement is the use of Giyaz al-Din Ali's story detailing Timur's experience in India, the Ruz name Ye Ghazavid e Hindustan, that is present in both versions of the Zafranama that are decades apart. In 1410, one of Timur's sons, Shah Rukh, demanded an updated version of his father's history. By then, the original Zafranama's author, Nizam al-Din Shami, had passed so another scribe, Taj al-Salmani, finished the manuscript and put Timur's last few years onto paper. These textual precedents were important to the creation of the Zafranama of Sultan Hussein, as they dictated the content of the text in the manuscript. The Zafranama of Sultan Hussein was produced in the 15th century 1467-8, possibly in the town of Herat. The Colophon states that the manuscript was the work of the most humble Sheer Ali, who was a popular scribe in his day. It is believed that the six illustrations were painted by the renowned artist, Kamal Adin Bazad. Topic. Author Sharif al-Din Ali Yazdi, also known by his pen name Sheriff, was a 15th-century scholar who authored several works in the arts and sciences, including mathematics, astronomy, enigma, literature such as poetry, and history, the Zafranama being his most famous 539. He was born in the affluent city of Yazd, Iran in the 1370s. He devoted much of his life to scholarship, furthering his education in Syria and Egypt until Timur's death in 1405-1-19. Sharif al-Din rebelled against ruler Sharuk Timur 1446-1447 when the government was vulnerable, but was later commissioned to different cities for his acumen. 
The later years of his life were spent in Taft, where he eventually died in 1454 Montferd 539. Yazdi was directed to write a biography of Timur in 1421 known as the Zafranama, completing it four years later in 1425. Timur's grandson Sultan Abu al-Fath Ibrahim Mirza was patron during the completion of his father's biography Monferd 539. Topic. Introduction to the illustrations The Zafranama of Sultan Hussein includes six double-page illustrations that correspond with the text, equating to twelve miniatures Sims, 180-1. The pairs consist of four battle scenes, one court audience, and one scene depicting the construction of a mosque. Natif, 213. Although there are debates about whether the miniatures were painted during or after the text was completed, it is clear that space was left for the miniatures to be added in at these specific points, with the text continuing around the frame set out for the illustration Sims, 180-1. The double-page format of the illustrations is a unique artistic decision, as in this period most double illustration pages were only used for frontispieces Natif, 225. Two theories are used to explain this divergent inclusion. Some believe that the design for the Yazdi Zafranama was inspired by the Zafranama of Ibrahim Sultan, 1436 Zafranama, which had five double-page compositions, although the Zafranama of Ibrahim Sultan illustrates a narrative sequence with the addition of smaller miniatures. Natif, 25. Thomas Lentz suggests that wall paintings which decorated Timurid elite palaces may have also been an influence on this double-page format, inspiring the artist to copy this style onto the pages of a manuscript. Besides the format, the miniatures themselves are also significant compared to earlier manuscript illustrations. The illustrations are brightly colored and display original compositions which reveal a depth of emotion and psychological reality which relates figures to one another. Sims, 281. Thus, the Zafranama of Sultan Hussein stands out as one of the great illustrated texts of the Timurid period. Topic. Breakdown of the paintings The illustrations in the Zafranama of Sultan Hussein fluctuate between images of Timur himself and Umar Sheikh, his second son. The first illustration is labeled, Timur holds audience in bulk on the occasion of his assumption of succession to the line of the Chaghate Khans on 12 Ramadan 771 9 April 1370, and depicts Timur, in the center of the page, under a tent, being crowned in the springtime, an almost exact translation of the text into picture Sims, 237. In contrast to other illustrated coronation scenes, there are no images of dancers, musicians, or feasting, with Sims arguing this was done to ensure that the image conveyed the precise textual meaning of the solemn occasion it illustrates Sims, 245. This first image also introduces us to the main character of Timur, who can be identified in later images by his central location in the composition and his green robe. The isolation of the hero in an empty space is a recurring feature in the manuscript Natif, 214. The second folio is entitled Timur's Army Commanded by Umar Sheikh Attacks or Jench, Kiva in the spring of 781-1379, which shows Timur's second son attacking an enemy citadel. Umar Sheikh was the great-grandfather of Sultan Hussein, the patron, and by including him in the illustrations as a military hero, he connects himself more closely with the prowess of Timur Sims, 283-4. This episode is again a very literal translation of the text that relates to it. The composition is animated and seeks to show both horses and men in a variety of positions as they actively fight to take the citadel Natif, 215. Experts have also said that this folio combines both 15th-century conventions and original features in depicting the composition and details, yet it still creates an original painting. Natif, 215, Umar Sheikh outmaneuvers Ankatora in a night attack on the Syr Darya in 791,388. The next folio, also shows a battle scene, depicting two armies converging over a river at night. 
In contrast to the previous two images, this painting is much more ambiguous, both in composition and meaning Sims, 260. This illustration does not match up with the story in the text, which states that it is the army of Ankatora that surprises the Timurids by crossing the river, while the illustration shows the opposite Natif, 217. In addition, the composition is also confusing as it is difficult to identify the enemy and main characters in this illustration, which contrasts greatly from the clear and organized compositions of the previous images. Sims concludes that this painting must be judged on its considerable formal values separately, quite apart from its value as the illustration of a specific historical event. Sims, 260, the next image, Timur's army attacks the survivors of the town of Nurges, in Georgia, in the spring of 798-1396, is the first depiction of this specific event in Persian painting, Natif, 217. The painting shows the Timurids being lowered in baskets down the cliff face so that they can attack the Georgians that hide in caves carved into the rock. The composition of this scene is more free and flowing than previous images, with a rhythm created through the organic forms of the mounted soldiers and the curves of the rock face Natif, 218. One explanation for this freeness of composition is that there were very few descriptive elements in the text, so the artist had free reign to depict the scene how he wished Sims, 261. Some believe that this scene was illustrated because of its picturesque potential and propagandistic message of conquering a foreign foe Sims, 264. The next image breaks from a battle scene and instead shows the construction of the Great Mosque Friday Mosque of Sarnarkand, began on 14 Ranadan 801, May 20, 1399. This illustration is also an almost true match to the text that relates to it. One interesting feature is that the location of the painting is placed in the middle of a poetic phrase which describes the completed mosque, although the image shows the construction of the building Natif, 218. Yet, these activities of building are taken exclusively from written descriptions in the text Natif, 218. Although it differs from the previous battle scenes as having no heroic figure, the subject of building a mosque is seen as a heroic action, which is part of the duties of a Muslim ruler. One of the themes in the text Sims 272. Finally, the last illustration is a battle scene of Timur and his army storming the fortress of St. John in Izmir on 6 Jumada I805, December 2, 1402. Like the previous illustration of the Georgian attack, this narrative can also be seen as a propagandist inclusion, this time of a battle against a Christian force Natif, 221. The word jihad is mentioned several times in the text associated with this picture, and the illustration posits the Muslim king as someone who not only fights to spread the influence of his power, but also for religious reasons. The image again directly follows the text and includes many of the same compositional elements that were used in previous battle images Natif, 221. Sims describes this as the most effective image, as it consists of a clear composition that is complex and includes a unity of aesthetics, making it the best battle scene in the Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein Sims, 276. Illustrations can be found by consulting Eleanor Sims' thesis and Mika Nadif's article, both found in the references below. Topic. Function of the paintings The paintings in the Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein are unique in that the majority of the subjects of the illustrations had not been seen in Persian painting before the creation of this version of the text Sims, 286. It is known that the The Night Attack on Ankatora, The Rout of the Georgians and the construction of the Great Mosque of Samarkand do not have any precedence, although they were used as inspiration for future versions of the Zafarnama Sims, 286. Thus, the illustrations in the Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein were even more important as they had to clearly convey a text that was not known by many, except through one previous copy Natif, 226-7. This puts more question on why Sultan Hussein, or the artist, decided to select these vignettes to illustrate, and what he meant by putting emphasis on these stories. 
The Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein is very closely linked to the personal history of its patron. At the time of its creation, Sultan Hussein was focused on capturing the city of Herat, and ordered that a copy of the Zafarnama be made for him in order to prefigure the signal victory he hoped would crown his long and arduous efforts Sims, 349. The battle scenes, building of the mosque, and crowning scene, all relate to his eventual goals which would be fulfilled by the capture of Herat. Scholars Lentz and Lowry believe that Yazdi's Zafarnama was also an important tool of patronage, that would continue to spread the ideology and legitimacy of the Timurids after their fall Natif, 222. .However, the Zafarnama is a small manuscript that was made for singular viewing and was only made for the eyes of the Sultan and his court, making it difficult to be an important patronage product Natif, 222. Nevertheless, the Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein succeeds in being a text that shows the glory of a lineage and the power and duties of a ruler. Topic. Authorship of the paintings One point of contention surrounding the paintings of the Zafarnama of Sultan Hussein is about who painted the images that adorned the interior of the manuscript. It was originally attributed to the master painted Bazad, however, depending on when the paintings were added, he would have still been a young man and not yet a renowned artist. Some believe that the paintings were created around the conquest of Herat in 873, but it is unlikely that an inexperienced artist between the ages of 13 and 23, as Bazad would have been, would be given such an important commission. Natif, 222. Others justify that youthful exuberance of the paintings and the lack of anything studied or hackneyed points to the young hand of the artist. The evidence of emotion and psychological awareness between the figures and the inclusion of a variety of figures in the images is also a hallmark of Bazad's style and is used to justify his attribution Sims, 374. It is also clear that Bazad knew about Yazdi's Zafarnama because he reacts and relates to them the paintings in several of his works, it just remains to be questioned whether he worked on them or was just familiar with the manuscript Natif, 223. Although this query can never be resolved, the importance of the illustrations still hold fast. Sims condenses the purpose of the illustrations, saying that they were made to be a form of propaganda, improving the status and connections of Sultan Hussein. However in our current context, the paintings can also stand alone as masterworks of art, one more piece of proof that they were painted by a master artist. Topic. See also Tusk-e-Babri Tusk-e-Jahanguri